I have visited Ireland several times, first for AA Publishing and more recently to Counties Kerry and Cork in 2015 and 2017 in my capacity as a photography tour leader for the UK-based company HF Holidays. They have a website. Just Google HF Holidays for more info. For much of the time, the weather was kind, even sunny, but it also rains. And the landscape photographer is often made aware why the Emerald Isle, and in particular the Atlantic coast, has been christened the Island of Forty Shades of Green, and more recently, Wild Atlantic Way. I could show photographs taken over many years, but will confine myself to these two recent trips, totaling just a couple of weeks whilst leading landscape photography holidays for HF Holidays, a kind of retrospect where you too could have taken a picture like mine. Mention County Kerry and its celebrated ring will spring immediately to mind. A 110-mile road tour around a peninsula extending into the Atlantic from Killarney and Kenmare. It also boasts Ireland's highest peak, Carron Two Hill, rising to 3,409 feet. But being a rather shy mountain, it prefers to bury its top in cloud for most of the time, so we never saw much of it. Ranked by National Geographic as one of the top 50 best scenic drives in the world, the Ring of Kerry's breathtaking scenery, embracing thousands of years of dramatic history, is washed and caressed by the Gulf Stream. The route passes through Cahasavine, Waterville and Sneem, all worth a pause. Stop at Cahasavine for the Daniel O'Connell Memorial Church, one of few Catholic churches in the world dedicated to a lay person, a politician known as the uncrowned king of Ireland. It is the most dominant feature in town built from Irish granite from County Down. Charlie Chaplin is remembered at Waterville, which was his holiday haunt, a landscape of wide sandy beaches nestling between the Atlantic and nearby lakes, where Chaplin would fish and go horse riding. The village of Sneem is split into two by its river and has several examples of public art. A famous visitor was the French President Charles de Gaulle. Whilst the Ring of Kerry is regarded as must-do, don't overlook neighbouring peninsulas, Dingle to the north and Beira to the south. The success of any photographic trip is reliant on research, coupled with a bit of weather forecasting. Whilst the solo photographer can wait, no such luxury exists when you are taking a group of photographers around Ireland. The Dingle Peninsula is not only the most westerly point of mainland Ireland, but Europe too. 
It projects into the Atlantic Ocean, therefore subject to wind and rain to a greater degree than further inland. Whilst running both holidays, I had good fortune, but I had to work with weather by switching a couple of days. Dingle Harbour has become famous for its resident dolphin fungi, but you will need to take a boat trip to see him. The harbour offers an assortment of fishing boats, and a little further inland, the town streets offer a kaleidoscope of colour with its individually painted cottages and shops. The drive around Slee Head should not be missed, especially the first sighting of the Three Sisters, a range of cliffs rising abruptly from the landscape. Nearby is Galerus Oratory, constructed from large stones cut on all sides so that they fit perfectly together, allowing rainwater to run off the outside its overall shape resembling an upturned boat. Dates have been suggested for its construction. Some believe that it may be 1300 years old. So what do you photograph in Ireland when the weather is so bad that not even a fool will venture out? The Daniel O'Connell Memorial Church already mentioned was photographed on a wet day. Working under soft lighting is easier for interiors as it avoids contrast, which may fool the camera's metering. You might need a tripod, but the Olympus OMD Image Stabilizer succeeds with flying colours for hand holding. Gardens and woodlands are also good subjects for a wet day, as they offer some protection from the elements. And so too are waterfalls, when longer shutter speeds can be experimented with, without resorting to a filter, as demonstrated at Talk Waterfall on the Macross Estate. Mizzen Head requires guaranteed good weather. I have been twice, but on the second visit it was completely enshrouded by sea fog so thick that you could easily miss the visitor center. Mizzen Head was the first or last land sighting for seafaring folk crossing the Atlantic and is situated on the tip of the Kilmore Peninsula. A substantial bridge crosses a deep chasm over a raging sea from which some of Ireland's most imposing coastal scenery can be viewed. Not far from Bantry Bay is Glengariff Woods Nature Reserve, another perfect subject for a cloudy or wet day, when strong shadows could obscure important detail. Now in public ownership, there is convenient parking where several nature trails of different lengths commence. Certainly worth a stop for an hour or two in any weather. The road from Glengariff to Kenmare passes Molly Gallivan's cottage and traditional farm, a step back in time to a simple country lifestyle. The mountains of Kerry were famous for distilling old Irish whisky known as Poitin, illegal until quite recent. On special occasions at Molly Gallivan's, there are demonstrations of this illicit homemade brew, followed by old-style entertainment of music, dancing and storytelling. A good moment to exercise the movie button on the Olympus OMD, provided that you have survived the watching tasting. Nestling amongst high hills, Kenmare is a favoured resort. Its name meaning Head of the Sea, referring to Kenmare River and Bay, 
its prime geographical feature. However, Kenmare before 1775 was known as Nadine, but by the end of the 18th century, the first Marquess of Lansdowne had changed its name, rejuvenating the old settlement to create the X layout of the town that is familiar today. Whilst not as popular as Kedani, it is noted for its cuisine and retains a character untainted by modern tourism. Holy Cross Church was consecrated in 1864 and is worth a look inside. The wood for the carved roof came from the Black Forest in Germany. Kenmare can also be regarded as the gateway town to the Bira Peninsula, similar to the famous Ring of Kerry, but more slender, a mountainous finger of land crossing the county border from Kerry into Cork, projecting far into the Atlantic Ocean. Beer represents a greater sense of remoteness than the Ring of Kerry, contributed by the fact that large coaches are unable to negotiate its narrow roads. At its tip is Dursey Island, connected to the mainland by Ireland's only cable car, its unique design reflecting the seclusion of this fascinating part of Ireland. Ali Highs, which means the Cliff Fields, was a former copper mining town where traces of its industry can be found. In addition to clifftop views, an appeal for photographers is its main street, with cottages and a pub decoratively painted in a riot of hues. The drive through the McGillicuddy's Reeks Ireland's highest mountain range is a classic. The road was constructed in the 1820s. The workforce invigorated by the illicit poitin brewed by Mole Kissain. The highest point of the road is called Mole's Gap, followed by Luce Canal Lock and Ladies' View, so called when Queen Victoria's ladies-in-waiting took time off by stopping to admire the scenery. Approaching Kelani is Kerry's jewel in the crown, a highlight that any worthy tourist to the area should visit. Macross House is Victorian, designed by the Scottish architect William Byrne and built of bath stone imported from England. In 1932, Two, it was presented to the Irish nation and originally named the Bourne Vincent Memorial Park. Today it is open to the public and entry to the park is free. There are extensive walks overlooking Loch Leon and Macross Lake, the McGillicuddy's Reeks forming an impressive backdrop. Nearby are the ruins of Macross Abbey, an important ecclesiastical building that has seen turbulent times. Unusual is its yew tree growing in the centre of the cloisters, reckoned to be 600 years old. Bram Stoker was a regular visitor to Kalani and certain gory tales related to the Abbey are thought to have been a contributory inspiration for Dracula. The most distinctive feature adding charm to Macross are the jaunting cars, two or four-wheeled carriages pulled by a single horse and driven by Jarvis. For a price, they are only too willing to chauffeur tourists around the estate, perhaps best negotiated as part of a group. Finally, a bit of techie information that won't please everyone. Whilst presenting this beautiful corner of the Emerald Isle, it has also been an object lesson in minimalism. All photographs were taken in 2015 and 2017 over just two weeks, 
with the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark I and Mark II cameras with just one lens, the 12 to 50, or 24 wide angle to 100 telephoto for non micro four thirds photographers. This gives me sufficient flexibility, especially when traveling extensively by coach or Shanks's pony. On a solo shoot, you would probably be unaware of my presence. For landscapes, I don't lug around a load of gear that I will probably not use in a designer bag that invites theft. This is avoided by resorting to a grubby rucksack with the camera, when not in use, protected by bubble wrap. Not good for the ego, but this policy has worked for years, even in busy cities, and so far after 50 years, nothing has gone astray. Auto is banished. All shots are handheld. I don't use filters. But I am guilty of some post-production to raw files in Lightroom and Photoshop, correcting problems that no camera as yet can deliver unaided by making certain tweaks first before pressing the shutter button. Remember, if you get it wrong in Lightroom, it can be undone. And these techniques are discussed in my YouTube photo sound bites currently in production. At the end of the day, my mantra summed up in one word is realism. And if that fails, I am also guilty of trying to hoodwink my audience. Artistry in landscape photography only works when the art does not obscure its potential, becoming the main focus instead of the subject. It is imperative to present a photographic view of a place that can be believed in, untainted and therefore worth visiting. As the well-known photographic rule says, less is more. 